Kitties, it's me, the Joker, the Clown Prince of Crime, and I have a very special Halloween treat in store for you. For this final installment of Bob Shoween, we're going to look at a film that's very near and dear to my heart. And to join us on this very auspicious occasion, we have the one, the only, the legendary Freddy Krueger! Pleasure to be here. I gotta say, I'm uh, really looking forward to this one. As am I, Freddy. As am I. Would you like to introduce the movie, or shall I? Oh no! By all means, go right ahead. Oh, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I give you Where the Dead Go to Die. <laughs> It should be noted right off the bat that the copy of the movie I happened to get was very degraded. So much so that it was impossible to edit it into this review. So I decided to recreate the imagery from the movie with the hopes that it can make for a halfway decent substitute. I'll never be able to match this movie's brilliance, but you can't blame a guy for trying. Oh come now, it looks fine. If this movie could talk, it would tell you just how thrilled it is that you wanted to do it justice like this. Oh, thank you. Anyway, our movie is an anthology collection made up of three short films, starting with Tainted Milk. We meet a young boy named Tommy who isn't very happy about how his mother is expecting. He walks to school with his dog Labby and tells him about how he's worried that his parents won't have any time for him like they used to. To the audience's delight, Labby can actually talk, and he tells Tommy the unfortunate reality that yes, the new arrival will be taking up a lot of his parents' time, but that doesn't mean they love him any less. And to my delight, Labby here is voiced by the director, Jimmy Screamer Claus, and not some former cast member of Saturday Night Live trying to stay relevant. That was a burn. Labby is also keen to point out that he came from a large litter of puppies, and while it would have been nice to be the center of attention like Tommy has been his entire life, he wouldn't trade his brothers and sisters for anything in the world. A few more days go by, and Tommy comes home from school to the unfortunate news that his mother went into labor a few hours ago, but she didn't survive the childbirth, and neither did the baby. His father is completely destroyed by this, leaving him despondent and essentially dead to the world. Tommy was afraid of being ignored by his parents, but only now does he learn what it means to feel alone. So, you, um, have anything to lighten the mood? No, this, uh, this isn't anything to joke about. I didn't think so either. Tommy misses his mother, and is afraid for his father, and has no idea how to carry on from here. But once again, it's Labby who comes to the rescue, as he tells Tommy about his own parents. His mother apparently died prematurely herself, and his dad took it pretty hard too. But as long as they stay in your hearts, you never really lose the ones you love. Labby knows how much Tommy's dad really loves him, and he knows that he'll go back to being the caring, attentive father that Tommy needs once the wound has had a little time to heal. Tommy begins to cry because he still misses his mother, but Labby reassures him no matter what happens, he'll always be there for him. 
And while Tommy may not always know it, but his mom will always be there for him too. He's right, you know. I've gone through a few losses myself, but I know they're still watching over me. Well, it seems even the greyest cloud can have a silver lining after all. As long as you have friends and family by your side. Always. Our second story, Liquid Memories, begins with a scientist sitting alone in a church, looking for answers. He's discovered a way to extract people's memories at the exact moment of their deaths, and insert those memories into his own mind. But he finds he can't bear it, since everyone he encounters is so terrified of dying that that's all they can think of, and collecting their memories just seems morbid and pointless. And that's actually a pretty heavy question. You have this amazing ability that nobody else but you can do. But what's the use if you can't funnel it into something good and positive? Can you imagine how sad and depressed Gotham would be without the Joker? <laughs> As if in answer to his prayers, a woman comes into the church seeking some help for herself. It's not apparent how it happened, but she says that she is dying and she doesn't have long until she meets her fate. All that she wants in her final moments is someone to talk to. She knows that she is beyond medical help, and she just wants a friend to be by her side when she finally goes. The scientist goes to her, and they begin getting acquainted. And he realizes that it isn't death that the woman's afraid of. She's afraid of being forgotten. He tells her about his experiments and about how he can save her own memories. But she doesn't want to burden him with the terrible memories of her life. The scientist, however, is perfectly content to do this for her. He knows of how he'll be feeling her pain once the procedure is complete. But if he can let this woman die happy with the knowledge that someone will remember her and her story, that will be enough to make it worth it. So she quietly shuffles off this mortal coil in the scientist's arms, and he saves her memories. It's a hard life to carry with him, but it's a burden that he will dutifully bear. Well, I don't know about you, but this is one story I hope I'll never forget. I doubt you'll forget this story. It'll just stay with you forever and ever. And ever, and ever, and ever. Our third and final story, The Masks That Monsters Wear, revolves around a little boy named Ralph who, sadly, has a facial deformity that he hides under a ski mask. What's even more sad is that this little condition of his makes it impossible for him to make any friends. But it's not all bad. He makes himself feel better about having to wear the mask by imagining that he's a superhero, and any time he sees a bug making its way through the house, he captures it and lets it outside before his mom can come across it and kill it. He values life in all of its many forms, and he does whatever he can to defend it. He truly is a superhero. I hate superheroes. But things take a turn for the better, as he goes to school one day, and he meets a new girl in his class named Sophia. He's taken aback by just how friendly she is towards him, and even she says that she likes his mask. It turns out that she has a respiratory condition that demands that she bring an oxygen mask with her wherever she goes, so it's easy for her to understand the hardships that Ralph has had to endure. Just goes to show you that no matter what our differences, we can find a common ground and learn to understand each other. Like how it doesn't matter if I murder people in their dreams, and you murder people with knives, explosions, and laughing gas. Exactly! The important thing is that we're both killing people with bad jokes. <laughs> Some of the other kitties come upon Sophia's little secret, and they start messing with her. They wear the mask themselves, they drag her around with it, they even record everything on their cell phones. They're just being horrid little monsters to her. But Ralph will have none of this, and after a good thorough thrashing, the bullies all run away like the cowards they are. <laughs> and thus Ralph has saved the day, defending his new friend and her honor, and the movie ends with a very poignant lesson that anyone can be a superhero. Anyone can be worthy of the mask.
So that was Where the Dead Go to Die, and it's one of the most uplifting films I've seen in a long time. I love it. The messages, the writing, the animation. I guess the title's a little misleading because we never actually see where the dead go when they die, but it's still an amazing movie. Just incredible. I just couldn't stop smiling at this movie. Like the great Orson Welles and his dramatized radio broadcast of War of the Worlds, I'm afraid that the movie we've been showing you was completely made up. Why? Because the real Where the Dead Go to Die looks like this! I killed myself the other day. Oh, now, Sophie? I don't need that. I killed myself, and I buried my body underneath the floorboards. I try to befriend him while it's here. He's watching you. Yeah, like my redemption of King Stefan from Maleficent, I had to make up my own movie, very loosely based on the scenarios that happened here, because the movie itself is so unbelievably terrible that I feel like it would be morally and ethically irresponsible of me to subject anyone in my audience to it. There are those of you in my audience who have seen the movie, and I sincerely wish that I could hug every single one of you and tell you that it's gonna be okay. This movie has no plot, no characters, no arc, no moral, no point, no message, no punchline, no nothing! It's just an hour and a half of nightmare images, one after the other, never stopping to give you a moment to breathe, or even contemplate what the flying fuck is going on! This movie offers you nothing but gore and animated snuff. Nothing actually happens in this movie except for people getting horribly mutilated, beaten, raped, slaughtered, or a combination of all four. It's like the director of this movie is living out some sick Jeffrey Dahmer fantasy. And he goes and makes this crap just for him to masturbate over. And the real icing on the cake is the indulgence of religious symbolism in this movie. You might be tempted to think that maybe this movie is trying to say something deep and profound, when in reality, it says nothing. It's like taking a picture of a piece of crap. Nothing there, right? But take a picture of a piece of crap on an American flag, and now it's social commentary! This movie wants to fool you into thinking that there's more here than meets the eye, but there isn't. Actually, no, I take that back. This movie does have something to say, which is that the director of this garbage hates humanity, and women in particular. The cast of female characters in the movie is as follows. A prostitute, a child abuser, a child abuse enabler, and a child porn victim! This movie is dedicated to pain, misery, suffering, and nothing else. Where the Dead Go to Die is an insult to animation, it's an insult to the horror genre, and worse of all, it's an insult to personal passion projects. There are people out there who simply do not understand Halloween. They think it's about the same kind of vile, evil debauchery that we see in this movie. But do you know what Halloween is really all about? All throughout the year, we are fed new story after new story about how we simply cannot trust our fellow man. But for one night, we put all of that aside, and we send our children to ask for candy from strangers. For all of its troubled history and mischief and all that, Halloween is a celebration of trust. And speaking as someone who is often telling you to go give this movie a try, or give this comic book a read and maybe see for yourself, I'm asking that you listen and trust me. Do. Not. Watch. Where the Dead. Go. To. Die. And hell, in the end, if you do want to watch something just for the shock value of it, there's plenty of options. I mean, go watch something by Rob Zombie, like House of a Thousand Corpses or Devil's Rejects. Or hell, even something by Uwe Boll, like Seed or something, at least. I mean, at least it's not this. Halloween isn't quite as big over my end as it is over in America, unfortunately. I wish it was, but I mean, that's what happens. 
But at the end of the day, the message is still the same. It's just a fun day to sit down with some scary movies, have a laugh with some friends, and eat some candy. It's an innocent enough holiday, and uh, from me, I just hope that everyone watching this has a really good one. Well said, my friend. Well said. And from all of us here at Bob Show and Abroad, Happy Halloween. See you later. It's you! Well, aren't you just adorable? I have a very special treat just for you. Uh, let's see. Vampire dog? Spooky buddies? Ooh. When good ghouls go bad? Caroline and the magic potion? And where the dead go to die? There you are! Happy Halloween! kill people in their dreams, and you kill people with knives ex Really? Oh. Guess what, Bob? Guess what that was that just ruined my shot? That was you emailing me back. It's your fault. HA! I KNEW YOU'D BE RECORDING RIGHT THEN! <laughs> Hello, happy... I forgot my treat bowl. See, when I do it, at least I do it in style. <laughs>